guys welcome back like I said in my third basics video I had to split up this recording so it's kind of an awkward transition but I just wanted to let y'all know again that I'm using the facility location problem that I'm gonna link below but we already did this objective function in the problem before so that's or in the video before so go look at that so you understand what's going on a little bit more but we are going to be setting up these constraints right here these three um, and then we are also I'm also going to show you one more constraint in another problem um, but I hope this video is helpful. Um, and then let's go ahead and work on some of these constraints. Um, so our first constraint, it says, um, we want to make sure that the amount serviced from I to J um, equals um, the demand of that customer. So we want it to be exactly equal. So we look at, is there a for all? Yes, there is. So that means we're going to start off by creating a loop. So whenever you have a for all sign, you want to start with the loop. So we're going to say, it says for all of our I, so we said for I in customers, um, a better, another explanation of that is we want to make sure uh, the amount serviced for all, for um, the sum of all the facilities um, uh, for each uh, customer is equal to the demand for every single customer. Um, but I'm not really going to go uh, any more in depth since uh, you probably already know how to do this problem um, on paper. But so we are going to say for I and customers indent, and then we are going to say LP sum, um, or actually we are going to say prob plus equals LP sum, and um, our, that's our decision variable. So we are going to use um, what did we decide was our decision variable? We said serve underscore vars, um, and then we look at does it have two subscripts? And it does. So we say again bracket i comma j parentheses bracket, um, and we are not multiplying that anything by anything. Um, so we are going to go ahead and close up that parenthesis. Oh. Actually, we are going to ahead. Um, going to go ahead. We also need a loop since this is a summation. So it's uh, we're summing up all the facilities. So we need to say for um, J in facility. And then the next thing we need to say is um, or look at is what is the constraint sign? Uh, it's an equal sign, so we need two equal signs. And then the other side of our constraint is just the demand parameter. And we already set our demand up here. So we say demand, and we need to index that dictionary. Um, and it looks like we are indexing just the I. And the reason we don't need to say for, um, for I and customers is because we are not summing over um, the customers. We already set um, for all I, so we don't need to say for I and uh, customers. That would mean that we're summing that over. So that constraint is done. And let's just double check that we did that right. J facility demand. All right. Looks like that's right. Um, the only other thing I need to say is that um, you have to have that colon at the end of our loop. All right, next constraint. Um, let's see. It says that the amount serviced um, for all customer or for all facilities um, summing over the customers needs to be less than the max amount that that facility can produce, um, and we also need to multiply that by our decision variable of whether or not that is chosen. Um, that facility is chosen. So let's look at is there a for all? Yes, there's a for all, and it's for J and facility colon prob plus equals. Um, is there a summation? Yes, we're summing over. Um, we are summing over the amount service. So we're saying LP sum. serve underscore VARS. Uh, does that decision variable have multiple subscripts? Yes, it does. So we need our parentheses I comma J uh, parentheses bracket 
Um, and since we have a summation sign, that means we also need a loop. Uh, we are summing over the i. So we say for i in uh, customers. Uh, the next thing uh, we look at our sign, it's less than or equal to. So we put less than equal to sign. Um, look at the other side of our constraint. Um, it is our max amount times our decision variable. So um, we already set that right here. So we say max amount. And we don't need LP sum because we're not, uh, we're not summing over the J. We are doing it for all J. Um, there's no summation on this side of the constraint, so we don't need LP sum. Um, we say max amount, and um, there's only one subscript, so we do bracket, and it's the um, J index, since it's for facilities, times the decision variable Y, which was our use underscore bears of uh, our bar binary variable, um, and for this one, again, it's just J, and we should be done with that one, and let's just double check that. Max amount less than or equal to, there we go. And then finally, our last constraint. This one is going to be a little more difficult, so we look at our first question. We have two for all. Um, I guess you could say just two for all instances. So we have for all i and for all j. Um, we are going to start with for all, uh, I'm not sure that it matters, but it seems like we can just start with for all um, i in customers and then for j in customers or j in facility colon. Um, and then we are summing, so we need an LP sum. LP sum. And then our variable is, oh, we are not summing. I was looking at the wrong one. Um, so we're not summing in this one. We actually, um, we just have the variable. So it's our service variable again, serve underscore vers bracket i comma j and then we look at our sign and it is less than or equal to and that is the demand times our binary variable so um, we have demand as our dictionary name um, and let's look at the subscript it has i as the subscript um, and then we have that multiplied times J. So um, that was our use underscore vers J. I'll show you that again just so you can see. That's the full line of it. Um, and that is the constraint we're using. And again, we don't need any loops within the constraint um, because there were no summations. We already covered the loops um, for the, in the for all statements. Um, so again, just to uh, really, really clarify this, these for all statements, or these for loops that come before the constraints, are um, they? those are what you use for your for all statements. The ones within the constraints are what you use to sum over um, a certain set or a certain index. Um, and then let's just do one more quick one, uh, I, and I just want to clarify again, you do not need to set a non-negativity constraint. We already did that when we set the lower bound of our variable. Um, one more thing we could probably do, let's look at our diet problem, see what the constraints were. Um, so I just want to uh, make this clear, you don't have to have a specific dictionary um, for maybe like an amount you're trying to meet. So in this case, the calorie requirement, we didn't have a dictionary for that. You can also just set the number in the constraint um, if you think that's easier. But in this case, um, we couldn't really do that. Um, you probably could have done it for demand, but then there would just be no point in um, all these loops. And it would take forever. So, uh, but in this case, we only needed to do that in one line. 
um, for each for the calorie requirement, the protein, and the calcium. So basically, this one um, was summing over. Um, it looks like for all for, or not for all foods, but summing over the I in foods. Um, and it was the energy times the food or the amount of food that was chosen, um, and it had to meet that requirement. Um, and then let's look at if there's any other example. Let's see. Um, this this example, um, this was a fire station problem. I'm, I don't know if y'all are familiar with that problem. Um, but we are going to do that in the actual fire station problem, but you can also have conditional statements within your constraints. So applying a constraint only if it meets a certain condition. Um, but go ahead and check out my fire station problem video for that because um, it's going to be way too difficult to explain that without completely explaining the entire problem. Um, so hopefully this video is helpful and just... Again, look at these questions when you are setting up the constraints and the objective function. They really should be helpful, but you just really need to make sure you're looking at your subscripts, looking at your for, for all signs, and looking at your summations. Um, and just follow my directions for um, determining what loops to use for for all signs and what loops to use for your um, summations. And make sure, really make sure you keep these consistent. You can't change this in the middle of your, um, you can't just suddenly change and say for I and facility, you need to keep that consistent. Um, hope this video was helpful and check out my next video for solving the problem.